So about six or seven years ago, I became really obsessed about variable tooth sprockets because I'm a cyclist and it seemed like a um, cool, interesting, challenging problem. So for maybe six months, I just kind of daydreamed about this. And then one day I had the idea for some math that I thought would work. So um, this here is the position of um, the sprocket teeth as you smoothly vary from say, um, you know, 23 teeth to 22 teeth to 21 teeth. And, um, you know, it turns out this math makes sense with kind of fractional values. So you get these smooth curves. Um, and then my idea was to make a rotational transformation of these curves so that as you rotate these two sets of curves, the intersection points control the tooth positions. So um, you'd start right here. Uh, let's see what's a better example is this. Um, so imagine this tooth here. So notice that these two curves are pretty close to orthogonal at their intersection point. And so twisting these two basically um, you know, controls these positions um, very precisely. So then, um, and, and when I had this idea, you know, being a programmer, Python programmer in particular, the first thing I did was, um, you know, whip up some some quick tools to start visualizing this so I could play with it. Um, so this application right here is some of the software I wrote to develop this. Um, and then the next stage was you have to have something to basically hold the sprocket teeth. Um, so I call this the carrier. So this is basically the sprocket teeth, and it's on this thing that looks like a, a chain kind of, although that's not the chain, it's, it's just what holds the sprocket teeth. So now as you rotate this, um, the idea is just something like this. So you just tuck the unused teeth inside, and um, when you're at uh, non-fractional values of this number right here, so right there when it's 21.0, it's exactly 21 teeth, um, this just works like a normal sprocket, so the chain can go all the way around it. Um, this right here doesn't cause any problem. And it's just during the shift event that the chain pitch changes. So as long as you um, time the shift in a way where the chain's never engaged on it, um, everything works. Um, so again, you know, I worked more on the software. Part of the issue is that, especially for the curves involved with um, the path things take as it tucks inside, and there's still some errors in that. Actually, there's some drawing errors in my, my little curve math, but um, that's a little tricky. And so I needed to constantly tweak all these variables and see if it would work. So you can see there's a ton of stuff in here. Um, and you know, the, the math is, most of the math is pretty straightforward, but it's something that would be very hard to drop by hand in a CAD program. So it's something where you know, I really needed to write a software tool in order to work on the design. So you know, most of this complexity is all in 2D, but then um, I wanted to be able to kind of look at it and play with it in 3D also. So I wrote a script that would take these 2D cross sections and then basically extrude them into Blender models. Um, and this software is definitely out of date. It won't work with the latest Blender. You know, I haven't been maintaining this. But so you can see that's one of the plates. And that's the, the carrier that holds the sprocket teeth on it. Um, and then here you can see you know, kind of what it looked like when the chain was engaged on it. So it's just like a normal sprocket from the outside. And then there's the other side. Um, let's see, give us, you can see the two curves a little bit better. And yeah, so that's basically it. Um, so I released all this under an open source license. And when I worked on this, you know, I've, I, the, Core math in terms of like controlling these intersection points definitely works. Um, you know, let's see. I 
like I said, the software I've been playing with it for a while, but um, yeah, see, force vectors. This is actually not for intersection points, but um, this is looking at how the loading is transferred from the chain across the teeth. Um, but, you know, so that works, but I never really got into the physical, the, the mechanical engineering of it. So this design definitely has pretty tight constraints on kind of its use of space. So I, I don't know, for example, given realistic, uh, sanely priced materials, whether this would actually be strong enough. Um, but uh, it's on Launchpad. Um, BZR checkout, LP colon sprocket. And I'll put a link to it. Um, beneath the YouTube video, and also link to the provisional patent that I filed for this, um, which, you know, it's basically just a, um, a nice scientific paper presenting the design, um, and I never filed the patent because, you know, it turns out patents are bullshit, but anyway, so thanks for watching, and I guess the point of all this is, you know, I've, I've been working on uh, really hard engineering problems are my passion, and you know, Novica and Demedia are my my current obsession, and um, this is the sort of stuff I like to do, and the sort of stuff that I have a, a good track record with executing well on. So, thanks for watching.